Welcome to the Bullpen, a monthly conversation about the markets featuring Tommy Grisafi from Advanced Trading in Mayville, North Dakota. As always, Tommy, we appreciate the chance to connect. Don, it's good to be here. We're currently in North Dakota, and boy, do we have a lot to talk about for the month of January, my friend. Well, let's let's do that. Let's look back. Uh, corn, soybeans, we made some big gains over this past month. Wheat, maybe not so much. Uh, even things like crude, we, we had, what, like a seven and a half year high. There's, there's a lot of things been happening this past month. Natural gas, crude. Let's stick to what growers here uh, in North Dakota are very concerned about. Let's talk spring wheat first. Spring wheat. Uh, down on the month, not very impressive price action, although we had a heck of a run. Uh, over a year bull market in spring wheat, still good prices, just not as good of prices as you could have got 60 days ago. And as you know, as a farmer watching this, all you ever want is what you could have had. But things have changed. You're going to have to readjust as you look about uh, at old crop spring wheat and possibly Separdis spring wheat of 2022. Prices were better 60 days ago. Things can change fast. You're going to need to be flexible and work with someone you trust, my friend. What about corn, soybeans, those kind of things? We could talk for hours about that, but we don't have that much time. Corn up 33 cents on the month. Big gains, not only in March corn, but December 22 and December 23 corn. We even had a grower call in today and ask about December 24 corn. If you're going to be farming in 22, 23, and 24, keep an eye on those prices. Big buying coming into the back months of corn, not only the front month gain, but the back month gains uh, a lot also. Tommy, there's so much going on worldwide, whether we talk about the concerns about inflation, the uncertainty of what's happening with Russia and Ukraine and those kind of things. How do these outside influences factor into what we're talking about in the grain trade? Uh, they do. Let's let's skip back 20, 30 seconds. Talk soybeans. Soybeans up $1.50 on the month. How do outside factors affect soybeans? Mother Nature on South America is large and in charge. South America planted record, record acres. And we're still rallying $1.50 in a month. Incredible. How does Ukraine and other things affect the world? Very much, my friend. Look at natural gas prices. Not only natural gas prices in America, but natural gas prices based in Europe, where, as you know, a lot of energy comes out of Russia. So when you talk about Russia, Ukraine, you have to talk about energy prices. Wheat backed off for the month of January. Nothing's happened yet as far as Russia and in Ukraine. Matter of fact, Ukraine complained that American press were making this a bigger deal than it needed to be, which, as you know, uh, everyone has different ways of reporting the truth. No shots were fired yet. There are a lot of troops on the border. Until something happens, be, be aware of it. But there is political uh, problems, not only in Russia, Ukraine. Look at the truckers in Canada. There's a lot of tension in the world. Keep an eye on the Olympics. Folks in the know say nothing will happen during the Olympics. And then after that, keep an eye on China, Taiwan, Russia, Ukraine, our borders opening. Do we have to show cards everywhere? What's going on politically? It's really disrupting. How does this tie into a farmer, maybe a North Dakota or Minnesota farmer watching this YouTube channel? It's all about the trucks, Don. Nothing that we have or consume is not brought to us by a truck. And we are short staffed. We have a major, major labor problem. And as the truckers are starting to go on a gentle strike across the world, it's affecting supply chains in a big way, my friend. No doubt about it. We've also paying, as you look at soybeans, paying a lot of attention to South America. It wasn't so long ago, we were talking about what, uh, 133 million metric ton crop in Brazil. Now we're seeing some analysts talking about 125. Uh, what's happening in that part of the world? It, it's a race to zero. Everyone wants to outdo the other guy. One guy says we were going to be 140. Then we inch it down to 136. You start getting a 20s in at 120. Now, now you're talking about that the world was depending on those beans. And we've still never caught up from what happened in uh, our drought in the upper Midwest this year, Canada's drought. Overall world demand is hot. Incredible, incredible price action. As beans today, being the first day of the month, he had a 15 in front of them. And that sounds funny to say. My question is to the viewer watching this, do you own beans or do you own them on paper? Do you need help with that? It's really important to remember during inflation, you make money by owning stuff. 
people who don't own stuff, unfortunately, Don, and I don't want to be political, but I will be. The rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. Poor people don't own stuff and stuff is inflating. Land, equipment, commodities, stock market, homes, things are going up in value, used equipment, used vehicles, things you wouldn't believe are holding their value so well. And unfortunately, all that stuff is mostly owned by the very small group of the wealthy people. And that's going to create more political unrest, not only in America, but as you see, beans have a 15. That's big time food inflation for the rest of the world. And most of the world doesn't live as good as we live here in the great north, my friend. So, Tommy, does, do, is there an element that moves out of equities and into commodities during an inflationary period like this? Yeah, there's a couple things going on. Uh, people are they do realize now that the stock market can break, but you don't have to have a long memory to remember when we had a half off sale last March and April of 2020. So just a few years ago, we went from 32 to 16. Now we back up to 36. We're coming down to 34. Yeah, money's moving around. Don, even if the Federal Reserve, right now the markets, the Fed funds, the Euro dollars, the two, fives, tens, thirties, that's called the yield curve. They're pricing in about a 1% to a percent and a quarter of rate hikes over the next 12 to 18 months. That's still not a lot of money. What's that mean? Right now, if grandma brings $100,000 into a bank, and I did a, a bank meeting yesterday with our good friend, Tony Goditis from Choice Bank. If grandma brings $100,000 in, she gets 0.25, one quarter of a percent. So even in a year, if interest rates are one and a quarter on short-term rates, are people really going to run to the bank and say, here, hold my money, give me 1%. When inflation's running at 10, 15, in some cases, 20%, the truth is grandma who's bringing a dollar to the bank a year from now, she really only has 80 cents on the dollar left when you convert dollar terms into what's happening in a rising inflation environment. That dollar, it's taking more dollars to buy the same amount of goods a year later. And that's the biggest sneaky thing that's happening in the markets, that everyone's looking for a home. Your question one is, is money coming out of stocks and going into commodities? Sure, but money is looking for a home. Understand, under Barack Obama, the deficit went up eight to nine trillion. President Obama was president for eight years. President Trump, president for four years, the deficit went up by another eight to nine trillion. President Joe Biden, one year anniversary, the deficit went up by 1.8 trillion dollars. We are printing money. Over 30% of all the money that's out there right now has been printed in the last 24 months. And so folks are trying to make more because it's taking more to buy more. And I know if you if you went to the store or you filled up lately, I know you don't drive too far to work, so you might not notice it. But people commuting, trucks, cars, travel coming in the spring, things are expensive. There's talk. I don't like this talk, but there's talk. $4 gas at the pump here in the Midwest comes spring. Tommy, you mentioned we moved into this month of February. This is the month we established those crop insurance uh, prices. Uh, when you look at where we are in the in the corn soybean markets, uh, what's this mean for us really as we look together, look at our risk management plans going forward? <laughs> what can you say? We have historic high prices. It's the month of February. For those people out there that are conspiracy theorists and they think we're going to trade down because the government wants you to not have such a high crop insurance level, keep an eye on the markets. There's things you can do. I don't necessarily believe in that, but I do believe that you can make forward sales, protect the market with put options. Of course, futures and options have risk, and we always have to mention that, but doing nothing has risk too, my friend. And the worst thing that could happen to the American farmer right now would be to pay up for those high inputs, and they are going to have to pay up for them, and then to not have something done on the back end with a good percentage of forward sales, a floor under there somehow, and then tie that all together with crop insurance. Now you have something that you can tank to the bank. Time you get into this time of year and you start thinking about what uh, kind of acreage mix you're gonna put into the ground. Uh, we'd be thinking about weather or what our normal crop rotation would be. This year, it's, are we even gonna be able to get the, the fertilizer or the chemical or, or some of the inputs that we normally would do to put in a crop? that might shake up that uh, acreage decision right up till planting time. 
Absolutely. I talked to a good friend and client, BK Seed over there in Madoc, North Dakota, give him a shout out. And we are talking every other day about the price of stuff, but not only the price, is it available? Farmers aren't even as much worried about the price, but if they have one type of technology in seed and it needs to match up with this chemistry, will there be enough of everything to meet everyone's needs? That prices used to be adjusted quarterly, they're being adjusted multiple times a week. And that is, there's the word inflation, keep an eye out for the word hyperinflation. And that's very much gonna affect the American consumer because as our clients who have to pay up for these supplies, it's making their input costs are going, going up in this crop. So for example, in a year or two, you might be farming up here and growing 12, $13 beans and 550 corn and six, $7 wheat and still losing money because it might cost so much for those inputs. That's really scary and you have to keep an eye on those markets and do something about it. Keep that open line of communication open with the people you buy your inputs from. They wanna hear from you and you need to hear from them. Be a good communicator. It's gonna save you a lot of money in the end, my friend. We get into March and folks wanna start looking at the prospective plantings report from USDA. And that, that always still changes by the time we start uh, getting our, our uh, wheels in the ground. But this year, it could uh, really be a whole lot different from what we see at March. Absolutely. The, the, the acreage mix could be interesting. I'll tell you what, uh, folks I work with at Advanced Trading keep calling up and asking, are the North Dakota farmers going to plant a lot of corn and beans? I think one of the greatest shockers might be what we don't plant up here, that we don't plant as much corn and beans as you think. And we plant those things that people in the Midwest aren't familiar with. People in the Midwest forget where Durham comes from, flax. Look at how profitable growing canola is right now. Uh, the edibles. Yeah. All the products we can grow here, sunflower seeds. When you look at this and you look at the drought in Canada, had a, a, a much bigger effect on the overall what's happening in the world economy. The demand for all these products is wonderful. Your derm for your pasta, your, you know, the, the oils and canola and sunflower seeds. It, it, unbelievable demand. And we don't have to plant corn and beans here. We have other choices. So switching it to our friends in Texas, look at the price of cotton. You have a choice, cotton or corn. They both look good. Going to be an incredible amount of cotton acres that go down in the South. Rice, the acreage mix, it's going to be a dynamic day at the end of March, March 30th, 31st, somewhere around there when that acreage mix comes out. And of course, that's where the government thinks we're going to plant acreage. Mother Nature will have the final say, my friend. What about winter wheat? We're not hearing, uh, it doesn't seem to be a stellar crop at this point. Uh, could some of those acres be converted to something else as well? I'm not a great guy to talk about winter wheat. Then uh, We do have clients down there. I don't work with a lot of clients in that area. What I can tell you about trading wheat my whole career at the Board of Trade in Minneapolis Grain Exchange and the Kansas City Board of Trade is wheat's like that cat with nine lives. Someone could say right now it doesn't look good. Somehow by July and August, we'll have a big wheat crop coming. It Wheat's a weed. It's hard to kill it. And you always hear they're going to tear it up and plant corn. I, it's expensive to do that. Keep an eye on that wheat crop. We know a little less acres went in. The wheat market had negative price action last month when the rest of the markets were actually starting to really move up. And the wheat market seems like not only do we have an American wheat market, but we have a world meat wheat market. And that wheat market built up a premium on various reasons. Russia, Ukraine was the final straw. And every day that there's not as big of a foreseen problem there, the wheat market looks to be backing down. So uh, wheat's not as exciting as corn and beans moving forward. So I always appreciate this chance to, to reconnect uh, once a month and take a look at uh, where we've been, where we're going. Anything we should take note of as we uh, go through this month of February? It's February. Call your crop insurance agent. Sharpen those pencils, my friend. I'd love for people to stop by our Mayville, North Dakota office at First State Bank and They'd like to sit down with a professional and talk about laying off some risk. We could help them do that. Tommy, as always, we appreciate it. Tommy Grisafi from Advanced Trading, Mayville, North Dakota. That's our bullpen. I'm Don Wick right here on the Red River Farm Network.